This is What's Happening and Why Astrology, where we look at global events and link it to the astro climate. If you want specifics on your sun sign, I put out a monthly sun sign astro dice review. Check it out at the start of each month. Remember to like, follow, share and comment. And thank you. It really helps my channel. On the 20th of Feb, the Pisces new moon clicks in. The moon loves to be in Pisces, where it's soft and flowy and emotional and creative. And it's also a perfect time to set your moon manifestations in place. Because Pisces is the sign that can slip between the veil, reach into the other worlds and pull out your dreams. And this time it's right at the very beginning of Pisces, at one degree. And just on the other side in the border in Aquarius, we've got Saturn. 28 degrees. Saturn is the planet that likes boundaries and laws and regulations. It's not fluffy or dreamy at all. But with this moon, Saturn's boundaries dissolve. The space gets redefined. There's a blurring of reality. And in that, you've got to find a new structure. This moon can help you find the right formula and the right combination of intuitive sense and past experience. Saturn rules the marking of time, but Pisces is boundless and eternal, ever flowing. So there might be time warps, sliding door moments, things from the past or the future, just peeking through enough for you to give it a foundation. Give structure to your dreams. Get a creative base. Mercury's in Aquarius and is a bit of the star player in this moon. Have a look at the chart and you'll see that Mercury's holding the reins. There's a really tough aspect going from Mercury to Uranus here in Taurus. So we've got the planet of communication and messages and links blindsided by Uranus, who is electrifying, sudden, distracting, almost ready to do a 180 on previous conversations. Mercury square Uranus is like charging ahead on the wrong foot, getting the wrong end of the stick. It can bring about an outburst of frustration or a shock announcement, a change of plans, perhaps needing more consultation or a more original approach. Mercury's in Aquarius, which likes to consult the group, but it's having a problem getting the more rebellious aspects in line. Mercury and Uranus also look at energy and transport holdups where there's technology zaps and breakdowns. It can also mean expression, suppression and counterattack. It divides the conversation. Both of the planets in these signs want to be right and arguments could really go too far. Mercury square Uranus is a signature of verbal abuse, gaslighting, poking and provoking. It's controversy. At the same time, Mercury's in an awesome aspect with Mars in Gemini. And we've got a counterbalance with Mercury in a beautiful aspect with both Jupiter and Chiron here in Aries. This really sweetens the flow and it can also make a good thing out of a bad situation. Okay. Mars helps you get more direct more focused and highlights exactly where action needs to happen or where it hasn't happened. Jupiter and Chiron can step in to help the vulnerable areas, to help the fringe parts come into a more aligned space, to become part of the conversation. With this, a misunderstanding can be cleared up, differences can dissolve and common ground can be formed. Justice can be seen and served. In some way, if you've been in a battle with this Uranus-Mercury upheaval and potentially verbal abuse, you've got a witness or you've got protection, you've got justice on your side. Because of Uranus and um, Saturn there, cover-ups aren't going to fare well. Something good will come out of it. You might find with this Pisces moon that you can resolve a hurt or stand up for yourself and learn something you didn't know. Jupiter makes it big. And in a way, it's about seeing through the fluff and the past traumas and finding a place of compassion and acceptance. 
there's diversity and distraction, but also unusual alternatives and timely recognition. And another nice little tip, Pluto, right here at the end of Cap, is giving kind of deep love to Venus right on the very tip of the cusp between Pisces and Aries. When Pluto and Venus hook up, especially in a positive way, it brings out a commitment, a deep love, and often there's a gift, treasures from the deep. That could be a gift of money, it could be a relationship, it's commitment, it's a tap on the shoulder, a nod in your direction. When Pluto's in the mood for giving gifts, it can often bring up a sense of restoring past wrongs and giving you compensation and justice for something tumultuous you've been through. There's an uncovering or a reveal that can come with this. At the last moon, it was a full moon between Leo and Aquarius, with Uranus dead centre creating a T-square. A few hours before that full moon on the 6th of Feb, Turkey and Syria experienced earthquakes that completely flattened the area. Thousands and thousands of people have died and more are still buried under the rubble. The whole region has been built without proper construction to withstand earthquakes. What's worse, the Syrian side of that border had a lot of refugees from the wars and the earthquake is bringing up the trauma of those war-torn places. One of the victims said it was like a wound reopening, a large wound that was healing slowly but has reopened again. Another victim said the wound was reopened for everyone in Syria without exception. The earthquake brought back the worst parts of the war. That last full moon on Feb 6, we also saw the trials in Hong Kong begin for the pro-democracy activists. Hundreds of them will be trialled. Hundreds have already pled guilty, hoping to get some sort of leniency for charges that could have them spending 10 years hard labour in Chinese prison. The Feb 6 Leo full moon also highlighted a bit of glamour, superstardom. And at the Grammys, Beyonce cleaned out the awards, becoming the most decorated Grammy winner, which is pretty awesome recognition given she's a woman and she's African-American and her music genre, once sidelined, is now mainstream. We said there might be scandals and celebrity revelations. And a quick look at Beyonce's chart She's peaked at this amazing moment, but this might also signal a time where she steps back from the limelight. She's got some whopping transits going on, including a once in a lifetime Pluto conjunct her south node. In some way, she's completing the karma of the past and having completed it, she may be ready for a whole new role. Back to this new moon, there's one theme that's been continuing since the last few months. And that's Jupiter in Aries, opposite Ceres over here in Libra. This combo has seen wild weather, inflation, supplies and logistics held up, weather cycles affecting crops and farming, and covering some parts of the world in ice and others in water. These two are starting to separate now, but Ceres is now moved opposite Vesta the dwarf planet goddess of service has a sacred function, where you hold a flame for something that can never die out. This highlights a very protective and protected energy for women, for mothers and children, but also to women who've been subject to oppression. One of the things that Vesta rules is sex trafficking, and Ceres in Libra will be bringing up more investigation and revelations around those sorts of areas. We've also got another dwarf planet, Maki Maki, here right next to Ceres and now forming the opposition to Jupiter and Chiron. Maki Maki is a creation god from the Polynesian cultures of Rapa Nui. He rules long journeys by the ocean because the indigenous population reached Rapa Nui after crossing thousands of miles of the Pacific Ocean. Rapa Nui was a really prosperous and healthy place for thousands of years until contact with Europeans, which then decimated the population and the resources of the island in a very quick time. Maki Maki is a warning of going too far 
and the interconnectedness of the environment and ecology and the healthy flourishing of civilizations and society. Opposite Jupiter and Chiron, there's a real push for alternative solutions to come out, a shift in our population growth, the need to plan for energy reserves and water reserves. And potentially it will look at breakaway groups, this is Chiron, breakaway groups, alternative communities, and independent communities and territories to preserve resources, moving from a centralised society to a decentralised one. These oppositions help us get a glimpse of where we could go, and they also come with a healthy warning of where not to overreach. This Pisces new moon throws a bit of a Molotov cocktail into the conversation, but the rest of the planets are looking for resolution justice, new consultation, and new solutions. There's something coming up over this new moon phase where even if it's jarring or upsetting or abusive, Pisces softens the hard edges and allows a bit of magic to poke through. So your sensitivity as your strength. I'm Meryl Key, and this is my mystery school. Thank you for your like, follow, shares and subscribes because they really help my channel. If you'd like to know more, contact me on my website www.merylkey.com. Thanks for watching. Hello Weiwei.